Okay, guys, let, let's start. Uh, so we will have a sequence of uh, uh, colloquium talks followed by more technical tutorials this semester as part of the Simon's uh, semester team fund. Uh, and uh, in Grant's case, he already gave his technical tutorials, <laughs> so <laughs> the reversal. Uh, yeah, so our first speaker is John Steele from University of California, Berkeley, and he'll talk about mouse pairs and systems. Okay, thanks, Grieber. Uh, I want to start by thanking uh, the organizers of this logic semester. Uh, my part of it this last two, two weeks has been great. Uh, and thanks also to the Simons Foundation for financing it. Uh, I'm going to talk about some aspects of the connection between large cardinals and determinacy. Uh, what the large cardinal side is the mouse pairs. Uh, the determinacy side is the uh, Sussman cardinals. So large cardinals assert uh, the existence. They, they extrapolate from the axiom of infinity assert the existence of even larger infinities. Uh, determinacy is a generalization of the law of the excluded middle. Both principles, it turns out, come in hierarchies. They are our strongest, uh, the, the source of our strongest mathematical theories. And although at first glance they seem to be quite separate uh, based on quite separate beginnings. In terms of, it turns out these two hierarchies are very closely connected with one another. They're equivalences at the different levels. Okay, so I think this is a, uh, it's a really beautiful picture and we'll see part of it. I should say that uh, this is the non-technical talk. I hope that uh, it's, you know, I can get things across. Uh, technicalities are inevitable and it's, uh, it takes a while to really learn the basic definitions and subjects uh, at anything like the working level. So, you know, I hope that you'll take the uh, definitions, the proximate definitions in the spirit that they're given and they'll, they'll be of some use. And please, if you have any uh, questions, uh, or, uh, you know, things are unclear in some way, please uh, just ask. Okay, including the motivation, you know, ask about the motivation if, you, uh, if that's not clear. Okay, so here we are. Uh, yes, so one aspect of this connection or equivalence between the large cardinal principles and the termacy ones is uh, this old problem analyze the hereditarily ordinal definable sets in models of determinacy. Uh, your determinacy models says, do not satisfy the axiom of choice. They don't have the conventional large cardinals in them. They satisfy the determinacy side of our uh, picture. Uh, their HODs, those are models of choice. HOD is a model of choice. And it turns out that those HODs have large cardinals in them. And uh, there's an equivalence between the large cardinals in HOD and the, the, the determinacy principles and the associated determinacy models. So you can go back and forth between the HOD and the determinacy model. This is uh, sort of important in understanding both of them. Uh, now, this was HOD in the determinacy model was recognized as an important object before one understood what large cardinals there were in them. So it goes way back. Uh, in some sense, it goes back to Kalini, if you really uh, want to trace origins. Uh, Post-1970 work was done by people like uh, Howard Becker, Harrington, Kakris Martin, Moskovakis. I'm making, Grigor was not active in 1970, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, we're up to the 2000s now, Sarge and Solovey, me, you, and other people. You wouldn't. Uh, the main methods on the descriptive set theory side are games and definable scales. And on the HOD side, which is also now known to be the inner model theory side, uh, mice and their iteration strategies. Uh, scales and Suslin representations are 
pretty much the same thing. That's the Suslin Cardinals. Uh, my some iteration strategies, that's the mouse pair side. Okay, uh, here are two motivating conjectures. Assume the axiom of determinacy plus, uh, for technical reasons, but just think of the axiom of determinacy. That is all, all infinite two-player games on, uh, say, the natural numbers, so the individual moves are natural numbers, are determined. Games of perfect information on the natural numbers, length omega, are determined in the sense that one of the two players has a winning strategy. That's, that's the axiom of determinacy, and it's an infinitary form of the law of the excluded null. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, assume, assume AD plus, and uh, we're in a model which is just constructed from its sets of reals, so, uh, models that have further higher type structure and satisfy the determinacy are interesting, but there's much less is known about them. Uh, so assume that. Uh, then HOD, materially ordinal definable set, satisfies the GCH. GCH is one basic property that canonical inner models have. L satisfies GCH, its generalization satisfies GCH. So you can take this first conjecture as a, uh, a precise statement of we can analyze HOD the way we analyze canonical linear models like L. Okay, that's sort of what's behind this conjecture. Uh, okay, so HOD satisfies GCH, we assume AD. The other conjecture is that HOD can have very large cardinals in it. This is not a conjecture that would have been made in 1970, but, uh, but now it's quite a reasonable conjecture. And here's an extremely large one, huge cardinal, uh, which is beyond any, anything we have a chance of proving right now, but someday. Okay. So uh, in recent, meaning uh, 2015 to now, there's been progress on these conjectures. It's come from isolating the notion of a mouse pair uh, and proving a general comparison theorem for them. Uh, mouse pair is a canonical inner model accountable, in this context, accountable transitive canonical inner model of uh, some large cardinal paired with an iteration strategy for it. The iteration strategy is a set of reals, so capable of belonging to one of our determinacy models. It's a set of reals, uh, which uh, sort of certifies our accountable transit model as a canonical one, namely one that can be compared with others of its kind. So the comparison theorem is really the test of, of canonicity. What's new since that, since 2015, is we have general way of comparing not just those those countable transitive models that happen to have iteration strategies, but the pair consisting of the model and its iteration strategy. So we can compare the strategies. Okay, and that leads to something called the mouse order on these pairs. There's a mouse order on mouse pairs, uh, and it turns out these mouse pairs can be used to analyze the HODs of determinacy models. Basically, HOD is a kind of uh, iterate of a mouse pair. So we'll, we'll see more about uh, this picture as we go along. That's the outline. Okay, so there's a theory of mouse pairs and uh, that it can be used to analyze HOD. And then we'll see the connection between mouse pairs and Suslin cardinals uh, after I explain a little bit further what the mouse pairs are and, uh, and their connection to odd. Okay, so that's uh, sort of a summary of where we're going. Uh, here's some pseudo definitions of basic concepts that we're going to need. Uh, Okay, so we're interested in uh, large cardinals. They're represented in general by elementary embeddings. Uh, large cardinal hypothesis has, in general, sort of the existence of elementary embeddings with uh, certain properties. Elementary embeddings can be captured by uh, 
uh, systems of ultrafilters, and such a system is called an extender. So an extender over E is a system of measures or ultrafilters on M uh, that is measuring the sets belonging to M, which codes an elementary embedding from M to something called the ultra power of M by the extender. Uh, the extender is called short if all its component measures concentrate on the critical point, the additivity of the measures. Uh, that's uh, long extenders are important. If, if you want to represent large cardinal properties like supercompactness, you need long extenders. Uh, we don't have a good theory of intermodels with long extenders right now. So we're sort of stuck in the short extender realm, a little bit past that uh, that means that we can reach large cardinals that are like some super strong, if you know what that is, subcompact, uh, but we cannot reach super compactness with these types of models. It's a really great problem to, you know, to try to understand what this, the uh, mice look like at the level of super compacts. That's not where we at, where we're at today. Okay, here's a little picture of uh, how, how an extender is added to one of our canonical inner models. Uh, so M is uh, one, one of these models, and it has an extender that we've fed into its uh, into it. At, at some point, M has a hierarchy, so it's okay to draw it as a, a line. It's well ordered. Uh, at some stage, we've added this extender E, it is a system of measures on the model up to the point where we've added it. And uh, it codes up an elementary embedding that it, it, it may, those measures may survive to be measures on the full M, you know, even after we added this E there, we may, uh, in, in as we go on, not construct any subsets of the critical point, which are new. And so E actually acts on the whole M, forms the ultra power. And then we have this agreement between M and its ultra power. They agree up to the point where we put the, uh, the extender on to the sequence of M. And then you'll see in this picture, this other model N, which comes from nowhere, which uh, agrees with uh, our model M on the subsets of the critical point. That's enough that we can take our extender out of M and apply it to N and form the ultra power of N. And then we'll stretch the agreement between M and N to the agreement between uh, the ultra power of N by E and the ultra power of M by E. So those two will agree up to lambda plus. Okay, that operation is the basic operation in forming an iteration tree. Uh, so the simple thing we could do is just start with M and take its ultra power and then take the ultra power of the ultra power by the image of the extender. That would be a linear iteration, so on. But we could also take it, for example, we could take, ah, we could take an ultra, ultra filter out of alt M E, another F that measured all the subsets of kappa and apply it back to M. And that would give us a tree structure. That is, we'd have gone from M to the ultra power of M by E, and then gone over to the ultra power of M by this new F. If we have enough extenders, we can do that. And that's the basic step in forming an iteration tree. We're going, we have the direct limit system that's, uh, darn it, that, uh, that starts with M and then the ultra power and then maybe it goes on. And, but we, there's also a direct limit system if we have more extenders, so it should go back to M and go on some other branch. Okay, so, okay, an, an iteration tree is a, a system of, uh, uh, in which we keep doing that, keep uh, taking extenders out of the current model and maybe applying it to some earlier model and tree and continue, continuing the branch that that led to that earlier one. So we're going to get a tree structure that way. Uh, uh, we call our tree normal if the lengths of the extenders uh, uh, are increasing, and the model we go back to is the earliest model that we possibly could. 
Uh, okay. There's a picture of the models in a uh, in a iteration tree, or, ordered by just their index, by the order in which you visit them. Uh, and so the typical move is we we're at stage alpha. We have an extender f that's in the alpha model on its sequence. We have enough. These horizontal lines are measuring the agreement between the models, between successive models. Because our tree is normal, uh, after we use an extender of a given length, all later models agree with us up to the length of that extender. Uh, so we can take this f and apply it to the earlier model beta, form an ultra power, and get to the model at alpha plus one. The tree structure is the, you know, given by these arrows along the bottom, the, the embeddings. So, uh, you know, it may be some later time we take another extender and apply it to the model of alpha plus one and go up to another model and so on. Okay, there's, that's, that's a, the, a, a picture of an iteration tree. There's another picture of an iteration tree where we're drawing the, the models uh, as points and the, the uh, tree structure is given by the embedding along branches. Uh, okay, so I said a normal tree, the extenders had to increase in length, uh, but you really want to consider stacks of normal trees. So I do a normal tree, go to the end model of the, uh, to some model on, the, on that first normal tree, to the last model of the tree T0. Uh, and then I do another normal tree. So I, I abandon the length increasing. I don't have to respect the lengths of the extenders in T0. I can go back to shorter extenders. I, so I stack another normal tree, another embedding, stack them, and so on. So there's a picture of a, a uh, stack of normal trees. OK, what's an iteration strategy? It's a function that's defined on stacks of trees, and uh, which are, are by the strategy already, and uh, such that the last tree in the stack has limit length. And what it does is it picks a branch of that tree from which you can continue your process. So the iteration strategies pick branches of iteration trees at limit stages. And what's their obligation? To stay in the category of well-founded models. Okay, so you've got to pick a branch that's been visited co-finally often between your limit, below your limit ordinal, such that the direct limit along that branch is a well-founded one. If you have a strategy for always doing that, then your M is good. Right? So that's a really good M. If it, it has an iteration strategy, it, you, can, you can form direct limit systems and continue in this tree-like fashion. That enables you to compare yourself with other such models. It's what makes him stand. Okay, uh, you know, there's some terminology to do with iteration strategies. If S is a stack that's according to M, then sigma sub S is the tail strategy, namely uh, sigma sub S of a stack T that's on the last model is just use. Uh, use sigma to continue, sigma of s followed by t. Okay, so in any game, if you give me a position in the game, I have a, and I have a strategy, I have a strategy from that position. Okay, uh, the other notion we need is a pullback strategy. If m is embedded into n in, in, in an elementary way, and sigma is an iteration strategy for, the, for n, then you can pull it back to a strategy for uh, n. The formula is pullback strategy sigma pi on a stack is gotten by pushing the stack up using pi, copying it over to a stack on n, and then using sigma up there. There's a little picture of pullback strategy. You have m embedded by pi into n. That induces, as, as I form a tree on n, I can just keep copying what I'm doing using pi and future pi's that I get from the original one by the copying process. So I can just lift it to a tree on n, and then if I want to know how to iterate, what branch to pick here, I just look at what branch was picked on the, on the pi of t side. 
That's what sigma pi does. That's the pullback strategy. Oops. Okay, so now we can say what a mouse pair is. Half of our uh, subject. Okay, first of all, a pure extender pre-mouse is a structure that's consisted, constructed from a coherent sequence of extenders. So you, don't, you put the extenders on your sequence, but there, there are laws about how you do that. Uh, the, the main one is something called coherence, goes back to Mitchell in the 70s. Uh, the, uh, uh, all the extenders that you've put on earlier should be in the ultra power of the model with, by this extender that you're putting on now. And no other, you know, the, in other words, the model up to the point where you put the extender should be the same as its ultra power up to the point where you put the extender. And that was in our picture at the at the beginning. In our picture, uh, we had this agreement between M and its ultra power up to the length of the extender. Okay, so that's uh, that's what a pure extender pre mouse is. Uh, now it turns out that uh, we the iteration strategies for these pre mice when they exist, uh, at least with the proper definitions, they're also canonical objects. That means that you can feed them into the model. And uh, that's what uh, you do in the strategy mouse hierarchy. So a least branch pre-mouse is a structure constructed from a coherent sequence of extenders uh, together with a predicate for an iteration strategy for it. So you're, not, you're telling M extenders over itself, which it can use to form ultra powers, but more than that, how to form iteration trees using those extenders. Okay, now you, you know you need one needs to be very careful about how this uh, uh, is all set up. So M has a hierarchy and a, a fine structure. We can analyze these premise level by level uh, and quantifier by quantifier, just as we do in L. Uh, which is constructed from no, no extenders and no iteration strategies, but it's the, but it's the first case. Uh, and uh, okay, there's, uh, you know, you have, there, there are various indexing schemes, but uh, they're translatable. Uh, okay, at, and there's something about where, when you, when you put in inter information about the iteration strategy, how do you do it? Uh, well, basically, you just take the least iteration tree that M has been able to construct so far, such that you have not, you know, you've told M already, this is according to your strategy, but you haven't told it what branch of the tree to choose, and now we just tell it. Okay, so that's called the least branch hierarchy. Basically, the least tree that, least missing bit of strategy information uh, is inserted at each stage, at many stages. Okay, so, so what's a mouse pair? It's a pair P sigma such that P is a countable pre-mouse uh, need, of either variety. Either we're putting in the strategy or we're not, pure extender or not. Uh, Sigma is an iteration strategy that's defined on all countable stacks on P. Uh, sigma normalizes well and has strong Hall condensate. So now I'm there are some properties of Sigma that are needed. It's not uh, just not your arbitrary iteration strategies. You won't, you're not going to be able to compare them with each other if they're just kind of random strategies. Uh, so they have they need some uh, to have some nice properties. Those are called normalizing well, strong Hall condensation, and this last one is called push forward consistency. Uh, I can read the last one right now. If P, if P is a, a least branch pre-mouse, then whenever sigma is a iterate of, when Norbert Q is an iterate of P by the strategy sigma via the stack S, then the strategy predicate of Q is 
contained in the tail strategy. In other words, the strategy predicate, let's, let's look at this in the case where S is empty. Then that says that the strategy predicate of P is the strategy sigma as far as the trees that are in P. So in other words, the predicate of P is consistent with its external strategy that's part of the pair. Okay, and then this last thing says that passes to tail strategies as well as you iterate. So this is a consistency requirement between the external strategy and the part that's being put into the model. And because it holds and pushing forward this way, it's called push forward consistent. Okay, so those are, those are the uh, properties we need of our pair to make it into a standard pair. Uh, I should say this definition is meant to be considered in the context that we're in a determinacy model. That's, that's why this uh, uh, assumption that P is countable uh, is not so onerous. It's, uh, uh, and you know it, it, it's something that can be abandoned in other contexts. But for our, for us, relating large cardinals to determinacy and the odds of determinacy models, it's enough to consider the countable ones mostly. Uh, and this strategy is defined on all countable stacks, so it's a, it's a subset of H C. So it can be coded by a set of reals. Okay. So the fact that it's a set of reals in a determinacy model means it's a really good set of reals. It's not one of your axiom of choice sets of reals. It's a, it's a good set of reals. It's in a determinacy models. So your strategy is good. Your, your model is, your, the model's just a real, which they, they're all good. And uh, then the sets of reals in the determinacy model good, and that includes this strategy. Okay. Okay. Okay, now I, I let's see. I'm, I'm, where am I going to? Thirty-three minutes. Okay, so uh, okay. Uh, okay, let me just explain very briefly what these regularity properties of the strategy are that are part of the definition mouse pair. One was called strong con all condensation. Uh, so roughly, the, all that says is. Uh, if T and U are normal trees on P, and U is by the strategy, and T is a skolem hull of U, then T is by the strategy. So the strategy condenses to itself under some kinds of skolem hulls. Okay, and then th there's some work involved in saying just how elementary that map phi has to be. Uh, but let's not go into that. You have to be careful about the elementarity and let's not go into it. Okay, the other property, uh, main property is called normalizing well. Uh, remember, okay, so suppose we have a stack of two normal trees, T and U on P. Uh, then we can shuffle together and get a single normal tree. Shuffle them together and get a single normal tree. Basically, we take the extenders of U and we shuffle them into the extenders of T in a certain minimal way, uh, which once you think about it, sort of inevitable, but I don't want to describe it. Uh, okay, and what you get, uh, there's, there's an elementary embedding from the last model of the stack into the last model of that normal tree, which sort of encompasses both of them. Okay, we say that sigma two normalize as well if the stack is by sigma if and only if its normalization w is by sigma. So sigma respects normalization. Uh, and uh, the tail strategy from this tree w pulls back to the tail strategy of the stack. That's what this says. Okay, so that's normalizing well. Okay. Uh, and you can actually extend normalizing to normalizing. That was two normalizes. You can extend it to stacks of any length. Uh, and uh, so normalizing well demands that for any stack, if you normalize it, then uh, S is by sigma if and only if the normalization is. And you have this pulling back property. 
Uh, and actually, you need that not just for sigma, but for all of its tails, too. Uh, okay, Schlitzenberg proved that uh, strong hull condensation uh, for a strategy just implies it can be extended to a strategy on stacks, which normalizes well and has strong hull condensation. It's actually not so useful for uh, the construction I'm talking about later because we really want pullback, push forward consistency as well. And then Schlittenberg's method doesn't give that. But you can get these properties from by other means than this theorem. Okay, so so that's a mouse pair. It's it's a countable transitive P with an iteration strategy with these nice properties. Strong hull condensation normalizes well. Push forward consistency. Uh, and there's actually another technical one, but I'm not going to go into it. Okay, that's a mouse pair. Uh, okay, now uh, the language, the, the notion of mouse pairs gives you a language in which you can state some of the basic theorems of intermodal theory in a nice way. And convenient and uh, uh, some, 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 it clears away some mess in the basic theory. Uh, okay, so uh, so let's generalize the notion of an elementary embedding from from P to Q to an elementary embedding of a pair into a pair. What is it? Well, you demand that it be elementary as an embedding from, whoops. Well, you can read that if you want to. <laughs> uh, okay, so so it's an elementary embedding from P to Q uh, with the property that the, 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 on, on strategies, it should be that the uh, sigma is a pullback of pi, of psi under pi. Okay, so sigma pull, uh, psi pulls back to sigma. Okay. And then one can show that in any elementary submodel of a mouse pair is a mouse pair. That amounts to showing that our goodness properties of the strategy go to pullback, pass to the pullback strategies, which is a certain amount of diagram chasing, which I should say pretty, I don't know, 80% of the proofs here are chasing diagrams. Uh, the diagrams get kind of complicated, but uh, there's, most of the time, there's only one way you could try to chase it, and it's just have to be determined. Uh, okay, whoops. I'm going forward, I want to go back over, there we go. Okay, uh, then that further terminology, we'll say, say that the pair Q psi as an iterative P sigma, just in case there's a stack uh, by sigma whose last model is Q, and psi is the tail strategy. So you uh, iterate is uh, go from P to Q by sigma, and psi is the tail strategy. Okay, uh, then the iteration maps are elementary. That is, P sigma is a mouse pair, and sigma is a stack by sigma, sorry, S is a stack by sigma, giving rise to an iteration map pi. Then the tail strategy pulls back under the iteration map to the original strategy. So this is a property of the strategy called pullback consistency. Uh, we studied before the notion of mouse pair was formally uh, isolated shown to hold for certain, in many cases. Uh, and, uh, but in this language, it just says that the iteration maps are elementary. Okay. Uh, now, one of the fundamental uh, much used theorems or lemmas of uh, intermodal theory is the Dodd-Jensen lemma. Uh, in this language, what it says is that uh, the iteration map from P sigma to Q psi, it's suppose there is an iteration map, suppose this is an iterate, it's the point-wise minimal elementary embedding of P sigma into Q psi. 
So iteration maps are minimal in the sense that they're, they're point-wise minimal. Minimal, you know, the, our models are well-ordered. So uh, uh, you, can't, you can't map an ordinal eta to anything smaller than the iteration map sends it to by some other allometric value. Okay. okay, so that's the Dodd Jensen lemma. Okay, the, the big one is comparison. Uh, P sigma and Q psi are mouse pairs of the same type, that is either pure extender or at least branch. Then they have a common iterate such that at least one of the, on at least one of the two branches you don't drop. So you know it, it could be that one iterates to a proper initial segment of the other. Uh, it's, so the common iterate is the shorter one, and you can think of yourself as having to arrive arrived at it by dropping on on the side that came out longer. So that's one kind of dropping. Uh, okay, so you, on the in other words, on the side that came out shorter, you didn't lose any information. That's okay. So then we in so on. You can compare them in the sense they have a common iterate, and on at least one of the two sides, you have an iteration map. You didn't lose any information. Okay, that gives you some a mouse order on these pairs. Uh, P sigma is mouse below cube psi, just in case P sigma embeds elementarily into an iterate of cube psi. Uh, uh, we get then, assuming AD plus, that the mouse order on mouse pairs of fixed type is a pretty well order. Okay, so that's that's the hierarchy on the large cardinal side of our two hierarchies. It's the mouse order on mouse pairs. Okay. Uh, what's the hierarchy on the other side? That is the determinacy side. Well, it's the wage order. <laughs> Basically, uh, okay. If this is familiar, AD implies that uh, any two sets of reals are comparable in the sense that uh, one is many one reducible to the other under uh, uh, by a continuous function. Almost implies AD. But, you know, if we identify sets with their complements, it's either reducible to the set or it's complement. So A is either reducible to B or not B, or B is reducible to A or not A. So if we identify sets with their complements, the many one re order on sets of reals where the, the reducing functors are just continuous, that's a pre-well order. So well, there's our complexity hierarchy on sets of reals under determinacy in the abstract. Uh, and this mouse order, it, it's, it's the way towards it extremely fine. So the mouse order is sort of some uh, coarsening of the wage order. But it's consistent with the wage order. Okay. So, okay. Mouse order is on mouse pairs, which are sets of reals in our AD context, a real put together with a set of reals. And think of it as a set of reals. Okay, so it's an order making have two orderings on the sets of reals, one the mouse order, one's the wage order. They're essentially uh, the same. Uh, they're, they're very closely. Mouse order is cor co coarser, but uh, consistent. Okay. Okay, yeah, I see that. Where do the Suslin cardinals come in? Well, that's the coarsening. Basically, the Suslin cardinals are the places where you get new mouse pairs. Suslin cardinals were identified in the determinacy context long before we have mouse pairs. They're basically the places in the wage hierarchy where something new and interesting happens. What's the new and interesting thing? You get a mouse pair. That's that's the general picture, and we can verify that for the initial segment of the mouse order that we understand and wage hierarchy that we understand in terms of reals. Okay, 
So, and that's sort of where I'm going. Uh, well, it is where I'm going. Okay, okay so that's the, anyway, we have the, we have the mouse pair order on mouse pairs. Uh, we're thinking of these mouse pairs as being in models of AD. They're essentially sets of reals. And uh, that's, that's that side of our picture. Okay, let me not, uh, once you have comparison, you can develop a real inner model theory. And uh, there are standard parameters and cores. And uh, then there's a method of constructing them. It's called the gamma e starting with gamma wooden models. Let me not go into that. Uh, you can also look at constructing these pairs uh, in models of the axiom of choice, which have large cardinals in them. And uh, so that's not our context here, but uh, uh, you can prove that that construction doesn't break down using a comparison. Okay, there's further internal inner prop, you know, these you know, Jensen's fine structure of L generalizes to mouse, mouse pairs. Uh, general, generalizes to the mouse part of the mouse pair. Uh, so you have uh, squares, diamond squares, uh, a true fine structure. Okay, uh, you, you can also uh, show that various nice properties, niceness properties of the iteration strategy follow from simply the mouse pair accidents. So the strategy sigma is positional, for example. The tail strategy depends on the last model in your stack, but not which stack led to it. So it's a position, position, doesn't matter which stack you use to get to that model. Uh, there are strengthenings of Hall condensation and normalizing well. Okay, uh, now it's the main open question in the, uh, at, in the short extender realm is, are the mouse pairs co-final in the wage order? Uh, at least in the Suslin co-system sets of, of the uh, the Dermison model. And hot pair cat train says that this is true. So this the existence question for mouse pairs is the main <coughs> underdeterminacy is the main open question. Uh, so hot pair capturing is, is the statement that the answer is good. That is uh, for any Suslin co Suslin set of reals, there's a least branch hot pair P sigma. Uh, with scope HC, that's, we've only been talking about that, uh, such that A is uh, wage reducible to the set of real set codes. So the code sets for strategies, equivalent code sets for mouse pairs, are wage co-final and the Suslin co-Suslin sets. Now we need the restriction to Suslin co-Suslin sets because as we're gonna see in a bit, uh, the strategy of a mouse pair is Suslin and co-Suslin. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, what do we know about HPC? Well, there's one thing. It must be true. <laughs> uh, that is, at least if we haven't reached long extenders. Uh, Namely, assume AD plus and assume that somewhere out in the world there's a, oh uh, well, no, assume, assume that in our AD world there's an iterable pre mouse with a long extender. Then, in, for any wage cut in our model of AD plus, uh, such that we have not yet reached that iteration strategy, so that's what NALE says. There's we haven't, there is no iterable uh, pure extender mouse with a long extender on a sequence. So we're assuming there is one, but now let's drop down to an initial segment of the wage hierarchy where we have not reached such a gadget yet. Then HPC holds there. So HPC goes downward to everywhere it should uh, if 
there is an, a canonical iterable mouse pre mouse with a long extender. Okay, that is a huge open problem. That to prove that there exists such a pre mouse with a long extender under some reasonable hypotheses, like large cardinal hypotheses, uh, but sort of it must be true, <laughs> and uh, it, these strategies must belong to models of AD plus, and then that gives us HPC holding everywhere below each. Okay, so in light of this theorem, this false is almost certainly true. Uh, AD plus plus no long extenders implies HPC. That is, let's not just cheat and, and say that up higher there is an iteration strategy for a pre mouse long extender. Not really a cheat because it's true, but uh, very likely true, but it's it's avoiding the difficulties you want to. I guess, what do they call that? Uh, where you uh, have the advantages, has the advantages of theft over honest toil. Take it as an axiom. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so we, that's the conjecture. And it's known uh, approximation to this conjecture. It's uh, in some form has worked on before the notion of mouse pair was isolated by uh, uh, Woodman and Grigor. Uh, Sargsian, uh, and uh, Sargsian's work has shown that it holds in the minimal model of ADR plus theta regular, and more recently, uh, significantly further than that. Uh, but uh, the conjecture itself is open. Uh, if you assume AD plus and hot pair capturing, then uh, any proper initial segment of the wage hierarchy also satisfies hot pair capturing. That is, it's, it localizes. So we really are just trying to push up inductively through the wage hierarchy. Uh, uh, we aren't going to skip levels where HP, HPC can't fail and then hold again later. Okay. Okay, now, uh, what's this got to do with HOD? Well, if we're given a mouse pair P sigma, we can iterate P sigma, take one bundle iterates, uh, but then we can take those two iterates and compare them with each other. And Dodd Jensen tells you that they have to compare back to the same thing. Okay. And moreover, the iteration maps are unique. So the iteration map, if I go out, P sigma to P0 and P0 and then back to the same R, those two, the diagram commutes. So that means I have a direct limit system. And M infinity is the direct limit. So it's the direct limit of all countable iterates of P sigma under the comparison maps. Okay, it's well defined by Dodd Jensen. Uh, moreover, uh, any two mouse equivalent pairs have the same M infinity, because first you compare them with each other, and then you form a direct limit system. Okay, so, so that means that M infinity is formal definable from the rank of P sigma in the mouse order. But M infinity, that's that's a well-ordered model. You know, all these mice, they have definable well-orders. So you can think of M infinity essentially as a set of ordinals, finding the relation. Okay. Uh, okay, so it's not just ordinal OD, it's in HOD. So all these M infinities are in HOD. Can A, can A, okay. Okay, now let's, let's consider P sigmas which have an additional property called being full, which in our context, we can just say it this way, P sigma is full, if whenever you have a mouse pair of, uh, of mouse rank at least that of P sigma, then the M infinity of P sigma is an initial segment with the M infinity of Q psi. Okay, so it turns out there are plenty of full uh, mouse pairs given that they're, you know, HPC implies the existence of full ones. 
So if we assume ADR plus HPC, ADR, it's all wheels, games on the wheels have determined, it's equivalent in the AD plus context to every set of SUS line, okay, which is more relevant for us actually. So we assume every set of SUS line. That means that the mouse pairs are co-final in the wage hierarchy. Uh, okay. Under HPC. Okay, and then in that case, hot up to theta is just the union of all the m infinities of full pairs. So it looks hot as the first order theory of a canonical inner model of a strategy premise. The, these are these are LBR hot pairs that at least branch hot pairs. That is, they're the hot in the case the hod pair and the hod, or the hod and the hod pair indicates that we're talking about strategy mice, which are going to converge to hod in their in infinity limit. Okay, the pure extender pairs will have a limit, but uh, it's not hot. Okay, so if we assume uh, AD plus and V is L of P of R and HPC, we get that hod is a least branch pre-mouse. That's what this paper says. Uh, therefore, satisfied GCH. So we answered one of our questions under HPC. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're go where are we going to now? Eight minutes past, or eight minutes? Eight minutes. Two. Eight minutes left. Oh, okay. Well, uh, let's go a little faster. Uh, Okay, so the construction of Susan representations for iteration strategies plays an important role in many of the proofs that I've, I've not really given. And uh, that was the other half of our uh, title, so let's try to say something about that. You know, why is it that Susan, uh, well, why is, why is the strategy of a mouse pair Susan go Susan? And then, the other half of that is that sort of every time we get a new Suslin set, we get a new iteration strategy. Or at least, at least let's just say uh, why the strategies are Suslin themselves. Okay. Uh, okay, so now basically the idea is uh, M infinity is a iterate of M infinity P sigma is an iterate of P sigma. There's an iteration tree from P to M infinity. A sync that by normalizing very, very well, there is a single normal tree, not just a stack of trees, which you would get from the direct limit system, but a single normal tree from P to M infinity. That's like a kind of universal normal tree. We can justify all trees by the strategy by looking for embeddings from them into this single. So we have a universal object, that's basically the, and then we, we prove that a countable tree is by our strategy just by embedding it into this universal. What's the size of the universal one? It's the size of M infinity. So that means that the size, the cardinality of M infinity is a Suslin cardinal. What's Suslin by that? the iteration strategy. So sigma is cardinality of M infinity, P sigma, SUSA. Okay, so that's that's the uh, content of the, the slide, basically. So if we take a P sigma as a mouse pair, uh, well, it's not the full strategy that's gonna be SUSA, and it's the part of the strategy that's used to form M infinity. So we say that sigma is M infinity relevant if there's a normal tree by sigma extending the tree T to the last model Q and such that the branch from P to Q does not drop. Sigma relevant is the restriction of sigma to M infinity relevant trees. So just read that as the trees are actually participating forming the direct limit. Okay. Uh, and let's just recall that a set A is kappa suslin if it's the projection of some tree T on omega cross kappa. 
in the middle. And so you may have met boldface sigma 1 1 or analytic sets. Those are the projections of trees on omega. Uh, Every sigma 1, 2 set is the projection of a tree on omega cross omega 1. That's the Schoenfeld absoluteness theorem. Or actually, it goes back to classical descriptive set theory. So omega 1 is a Sussman cardinal. Uh, and uh, anyway, there are many, under AD, there are many Sussman cardinals. Okay. Uh, assuming AD plus, if uh, P sigma is a least branch Hopf pair with scope HC, then the code set for the relevant part of sigma is kappa suslin, where kappa is the cardinality of uh, And uh, that's, it's not alpha suslin for any alpha strictly less than kappa by uh, the Kuhnman-Martin theorem. That's, Kuhn and martin says that if, if, a, if a binary relation on the reals is alpha suslin, its rank is strictly less than alpha plus. The direct limit system gives you a well-founded relation whose rank is that. <laughs> okay, so m infinity of uh, cardinality of m infinity is a Suslin cardinal. Sorry if I try to show you that, I don't think there's any time anyway. Okay, so uh, uh, the, the proof sketch is just, I'm just sketching the proof that I already uh, sketched. So let me just look at this diagram to re review this pseudo proof I gave. Uh, okay, so we have P, we have M infinity, P sigma. We have this single universal normal tree that goes from P to M infinity, P sigma. Uh, I want to use that to justify uh, an arbitrary tree. T. And it's got to be relevant, which means basically I can assume that I haven't dropped going from P to T. Okay, that means that if I haven't dropped, that means the two of them are mouse equivalent. So they have the same M infinity. That means that there's another normal tree from Q to here. Okay, now I've got a stack of two normal trees, T, U, that's going to the same place as, as this single normal tree, W. That means that W is the normalization of this pair. That's that's what this X notation is. It's the full normalization of the pair TU. Now we look at the construction of full normalization, and what it does is it produces an embedding of T into this tree U, in, uh, W. Basically, W is what you get by shuffling extenders from U into, the, into T. It's giving you a way of Blowing up all the extenders of T into W, that's that's a uh, something called a weak hole embedding. So that's what we want. We uh, uh, conversely, one can show that any weak hole of a tree by sigma is by sigma. So that means you're by sigma if and only if you're, you're a non-dropping tree by sigma if and only if you can be embedded into this W by this kind of embedding. Okay, so what's your Suslin representation do? It searches for, it, it wants to verify that some tree that is producing on one coordinate, countable tree, which may be really thought of as a real because you know it's countable, uh, uh, wants to verify that that thing is by the strategy, by embedding that tree into this fixed tree that, so on the other coordinate of our tree that's projecting to the strategy, we're building the embedding, the weak, we call embedding of T into W. Okay. Okay. So that's that's what our Susan representation does. Okay, this can be used to characterize the woodens of Hod. Uh, I'm not, uh, let me skip this stuff because time is short uh, and pass to the uh, last part. Okay, so we've seen that uh, the strategies for mouse pairs are Suslin 
and they give us Suslin cardinals. That is, uh, uh, the cardinality of m infinity is a Suslin cardinal, and that uh, a Car cardinality of m infinity p sigma is a Suslin cardinal. The sigma is Suslin there, and it's not Suslin anywhere else but Kuhn, and way smaller by uh, Kuhn. Okay, so the cardinalities of the m infinities are super. Uh, in fact, uh, there is another way to get Suslin cardinals out of m infinity, and that's if you have a cut point. That's that's a level such that no extender overlaps it, uh, and that means that sort of iterating above the level is decoupled from iterating below it, and that gives you another Suslin cardinal. Uh, okay, and it turns out most likely that's the only way to get Sus. Well, in fact, we now we know that's the only way to get Suslin cardinals in the region we have HPC. We hit them all. So read that as every time some set becomes every time we see a new Suslin set, we see a new iteration strategy. Okay, so the, that. The thing that we hit them all is due to Jackson and Sargian. Uh, if P sigma is a mass pair and kappa is less than the uh, ordinal height of P sigma, and it's a Suslin cardinal, then it's the cardinality of some cut point. We just said that the cardinalities of cut points are Suslin cardinals. This says that every Suslin cardinal is, as long as we're uh, you know, sort of in the region of the determinacy world, the wage hierarchy, that uh, is where sets are wage reducible to iteration strategies, uh, which are equivalently our cardinal is less than the ordinal height of some m infinity. So with HPC, for example, uh, every Suslin cardinal is, arises as cardinality of uh, uh, a cut point of an infinity. Okay, and then uh, the connection with Hod uh, also gives you this corollary, 80 plus and Hod pair capturing, then cap is a Sussman cardinal, if and only if it's the cardinality of some cut point of Hod. If Hod is, we said, at least branch premau, so as extenders, there we look at the cut points, that is, things that are not overlapped by extenders. And, and then uh, those are just the Susan cardinals. Okay, it breaks in that into two parts. Uh, one proved by Sargsian. It had to do with the mouse pairs themselves. Uh, I think we're, I'm over time, so let me not describe the proof. Uh, uh, the corollary, they, they got something stronger than that the Suslin cardinals are the cardinalities of cut points. Every regular Suslin cardinal just literally is a cut point. That's the last thing, the, the corollary. And it's open whether that's uh, true for Suslin cardinals in general, the singular Suslins. So the conjecture is that uh, if cap is less than the ordinal height of m infinity for some mouse pair, then it's, and it's a Suslin cardinal, then it literally is the, a cut point, not just the cardinality of a cut point. Okay, and it, then that says the same thing for Hod. Cut points of Hod are the Suslin cardinals. Okay, so that's the, there was this one, one correspondence. Uh, between uh, mouse pairs and Suslin cardinals. Uh, this, this conjecture is still open. Okay, thank you. Question? Maybe John, you can tell us what is the most important open problem? In this area, uh, H HPC, and oh, well, you know, it, HPC is an instance of the question that's been that's 
really at the center of intermodal theory since the 80s or the 70s, namely the existence of, of iterable structures, the Iter existence of iterable uh, canonical intermodals. There's, we've known what they look like at first order appearance since, since Mitchell. Uh, and, you know, at that time we just had linear iterability to work with. Now we have the three iteration iterability. And the existence of canonical intermodels with these iteration strategies has like been the central question forever. Uh, and we've made progress in constructing more and more complicated uh, uh, iterable structures. But HPC basically is this iterability question, but in a certain context. The existence of mouse pairs, well, is the existence of their iteration strategies is what we've got to prove, and they should be cofinal in the Susan and Phil Susan sets. Okay. In that context, we have some construction methods that we don't have in the general case. It's hard to imagine that you could solve the general problem without solving that one. It's, you, you just seem to be better off. And if you're in the AD world. And it seems likely, probably, that's some of the ideas would be relevant. Okay. So it's the most, in my opinion, it's the most accessible uh, of the questions, uh, iterability questions that we, that we have at the moment. And most accessible, but still, it seems very difficult. So in this area, HPC, and there's another uh, question that's a uh, uh, sort of basic question that facing in a model theory, which is just what is the first order theory of the proof ice at the level of uh, long extenders, of capital, in higher levels of supercomponents. Okay, so we, we, we cannot. Uh, Iterability is stuck way below that, but but we know what the first order theory of the mice looks like because that was done by Mitchell in the seventies, basically, and uh, 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 others elaborated on it. But uh, we, so we knew the first order appearance of these structures, but we couldn't construct their iteration strategies. We don't even know the first order appearance of models of the supercompact. So that that's the other, I would say, the other big. Big, big problem on the subject. Any questions? Okay, then let's thank you for being here. It must have been a, a actually reception maybe. So we have a dinner reservation at 7 30, but if we get to be done early, then we can go to the Armenian Center and have some wine. Yeah, I mean